Today we're talking about using the MySQL command to create a uh, table in the database in uh, MySQL. In order to verify that the table was created, we want to use PHP MySQL, which ordinarily you click on the WAMP server icon and click on PHP MyAdmin in order to uh, to determine whether the table's been created or not. But unfortunately, with the version I have on this computer, it won't work. I think because I have a 64-bit computer and it's 32-bit software, it looks for it in the wrong place. So another way we can go to PHP MyAdmin is just by using a web page and having a link to it on the web page. The link being uh, localhost slash my PHP my admin <coughs> and the database we want to create the table in is called test so if we look in test you can see there's currently no tables in test and you can execute as MySQL directly in uh, PHP my admin by going to the SQL tab and the table we want to create it's uh, called genre. We're going to be using it in several future videos where we're going to actually develop a working application. But I currently have it in the uh, clipboard. So this is the way the command looks. It's basically create table, table name, and then you have the fields to be created within it. A genre ID, which is an int 11. You can actually just put int but you'll end up getting an int 11. and I've seen so much other code where they directly specify int 11. I decided I might as well go along with it. And then I say not null, which means the field can't be null on any of the records, and auto increment, which makes it a special kind of variable where you don't actually have to insert into this variable. You can if you want, but if it's a good idea actually not to because every time you insert a record whatever the current value of this field is gets incremented by one and saved in the record so the first record will be one the second one two and so on so I really just need to insert the uh, second variable which is a varchar which a varchar is variable length character and the maximum for it is a hundred but in fact it'll only allocate the field to more or less the size that the string actually is so it saves space in the database and then our final command is uh, primary key genre ID which says genre ID is going to be a primary key for this table and I'll go into what primary keys and former for foreign keys are in a lot more detail in in uh, later videos when we actually get into developing the more complex code that this is a part of. So if we go down to the Go button on the uh, SQL tab, it'll execute this query. And I was kind of hoping it would pop up a message box that says query executed successfully or something along those lines. But we can see that it did execute successfully because we now have the genre table under test. If I uh, go to some other database and then go back to taste, test, you can see here's the genre table. And if we look at the structure of the genre table, we see we have our genre ID and our name, which were the two fields we specified. And if we look down at indexes, we can see we have a primary uh, key that's been specified as being genre ID, which is the other thing we did inside the create table code. So we now want to do this with uh, MySQL connector slash net code rather than directly with the SQL tab. It's a good th idea actually to execute the SQL tab uh, or execute the SQL code inside the SQL tab to make sure that's valid before you put it in the code. That way you know that's not the problem if you run into a problem. 
you know the code is valid because you've executed it but now we just want to get rid of this table so we click on the checkbox to select it and then go down to drop and it says do you really want to drop the table and I say yes and it says your SQL query has been executed successfully would have been nice if it said that before but <laughs> I guess one out of two is good well now we want to go into our visual C sharp uh, 2010 Express whatever version you're using and then select new project and we'll call this project uh, MC for MySQL connector 04 since it's the fourth video in that series and create table and say OK and it comes up with our usual form and then one of the first things we're going to have to do, do if we want to use the MySQL connector slash net is go into the references and you see right now there is no uh, MySQL connector referenced which means we can't access the DLL so we need to right click and say add reference and then go to .NET and go down to MySQL.data and select that click OK and you see now MySQL data is listed as a reference in the uh, the references and now we want to put the actual code into the uh, form load so I'll double click on the form to bring up the form load event handler and then the next thing we need to do is put in a using so the code can uh, reference the uh, MySQL connector so I'll do using MySQL dot data dot mysql client and now we need to put the actual mysql connector code in the form load so I put that in the uh, the clipboard and the first thing we have is a MySQL connection object <coughs> and then within a try catch finally block we uh, instantiate the MySQL connection object with a connection string and I've actually defined this connection string uh, way at the top of the program out of sight so to speak because I don't want to reveal my actual password for the database although I don't know why I'm keeping it so secret I don't think I use it anywhere else but then we do the connection open and we define our uh, SQL string which is identical to the one we ran in the SQL tab in fact I like to use the plus equal to concatenate the string so we keep the way the table looks nicely formatted you know it's you can see what it is without it all being jammed together it looks a lot better I even put white spaces to space it over and so on and then we create the MySQL command using the SQL string and the connection object that we both created and opened and then we use the uh, command method uh, execute non-query which is one of the three commands that uh, we talked about previously the first one was execute scalar that we used in the, a previous video and then there's execute non-query which we're using this video and then there's one called execute reader which allows you to read data into a, a MySQL reader object uh, which we're going to look at when we start looking at selects and reading back data that we've inserted but essentially this says try these codes that work with the MySQL connector objects and if any of them don't work do a catch with a MySQL exception of EX and then have a message box that says the create table failed and does an expansion of what the uh, error code is converting it to string 
Unfortunately, this is really long string. It would be simpler if it were shorter. And then on the finally, which gets executed whether or not the try or the catch block worked, we close the connection. So if we save this and compile and run it, see the form comes up without any errors happening. And if we go back into our PHP uh, MySQL admin, and we look at our test database, we see that once again the uh, genre table has been created and the structure looks identical to the way it looked when we executed it in the uh, MySQL tab or the SQL tab which shows that everything worked correctly both the SQL code and the MySQL connector objects you might be curious to see what happens if we try and execute this again since the table already exists. This in fact will create an error and we'll end up catching the MySQL exception. So if I run this again, see we get the error box popped up and it says create table failed error and then there's so much data you can almost not find the error but the error is table genre already exists. Well. I hope you uh, enjoyed this video and learned a lot, and I'd appreciate it if you'd subscribe.